Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to talk through some of the code that was generated when we initialized our application using the Meteor Create command that we used in the last video. So check it out. You're going to see what does what within Meteor and what is existing when we use that create command. So let's get started right now. <music> So we have our project, we've started it, it's been created, and while we're not going to get into the actual creation of our resolutions uh, code in this video, what we are going to do is show you a little bit of the Meteor uh, code that was generated and what's doing what within this demo. So when we used create, it created this code for us in our folder, which was resolutions. I'm just going to drag this folder into my Sublime text so we can take a look. Now, as you'll notice, we have a folder that is .meteor. Now, this folder is going to contain a lot of the things about our application. As you can see, it tells versions of dependencies. You can use it, uh, see it's using things like underscore. Um, it's using things like Blaze, which is their uh, templating system, their views. It's using packages like auto publish. Now, if you don't recognize a lot of these packages, that's okay because a lot of them are Meteor specific packages. Now, that's one of the cool things about Meteor. It's sort of a platform of a bunch of different components, like using the Blaze for the uh, front end uh, views and things like that. And although it is opinionated by using something like underscore, you can actually easily add in something like like Lodash, if that's what you're used to using, instead of underscore, uh, like I prefer to do myself. Okay, so let's check out some other stuff. You can see the version of the Meteor. Uh, now, the stuff within this .meteor folder, you're not going to be going in here. If we come into .local, there's all sorts of things, uh, and we're really not going to be touching any of these files. But it is kind of interesting to paw through here and sort of see the internals of what's going on with Meteor. And if you have no clue at the end of the day what any of that stuff is doing, don't worry about it. We're going to be creating cool stuff regardless. Okay, so let's check out our resolutions.html. And this is going to be your first introduction to the Blaze templating. So what we have here is just some normal looking HTML. However, we have a couple double brackets, a, a greater than, and then a name. What this name is doing is it's actually referencing a template. Now, if you look down here, we see a template with the same name, hello. Now, this contains the click me and the you've pressed counter, which is in these brackets as well. So as if we head back to our page, you can see that the uh, digit right here is our counter and this button is our button. However, all of this content in this template has been inserted into this hello tag. So this hello is just referencing this template. Now we're going to dive in a whole lot more with what these templates can do. Uh, it can do quite a bit and it's really, really cool. So don't worry about too much other than this is just standard HTML, just augmented with some template tags and some additional functionality. Now let's check out our CSS. See how there's nothing in here? I'm going to show you something really, really cool about working with Meteor. We have the Meteor command running, our website's live. Uh, and Actually, uh, let's type in body brackets and let's say background red. I saved this. Now I'm going to tab back over to my browser. Without refreshing or without telling the browser anything, it's already updated the color. That's one of the great things about Meteor is when you're just working in it, it's auto updating. So as you're saving your CSS, you can tab back to your browser and you're getting this auto update. But we didn't even have to do anything to tell one, our browser. I didn't have to enable any sort of plugins or extensions. I didn't have to do anything. It just knows. So uh, that's one really great thing about Meteor. Likewise, we could just instantly change this to anything. Let's just say uh, LB blue. OK, back. And as you can see, it changed really quickly. OK. Another really interesting thing about this CSS within here is that this file is named resolutions.css. If we look in our HTML, it's not referencing any CSS file. And you might be wondering, well, how is it getting anything? 
So what happens is Meteor just knows that this resolutions.css file is going to be going with your project. Now, ways this can be augmented is through something like CSS preprocessors. In fact, in this video series, we're gonna show you how to use stylus within Meteor so that you can write stylus files that are broken up into all sorts of different files. And you'll never even have to look at a CSS file. So that's just one of the really cool things about Meteor. It just makes a lot of things really nice for you. You don't have to worry about your pre-compiled and your compiled styles, just what styles you're using in your application and what you're writing. Okay, so now let's check out this JavaScript in resolutions.js. Now, if you look up top here, the first thing you see is this if Meteor is a client. This is where we're gonna put all of our client-side JavaScript. And if you look down here, we actually have an analogous if Meteor is server, which is where we're going to put our server code. For instance, there's this meteor.startup, which is code that's going to run on the server at startup. Now, Meteor oftentimes combines front end and back end code into single statements, so it, it keeps things together. However, you can do separate functions. Uh, and in fact, there's going to be all sorts of instances where either or is going to be um, useful to you at that given time. Also, what we have here is a session set default, and what it's doing is it's setting a variable named counter to zero, and because this is a session variable, only the user whose current session is going to see that. In the quick example that you uh, we showed you before, uh, where one user was able to see the resolutions that other users were seeing as they happened uh, without refreshing, uh, you'll notice that this is different because this counter is using a session variable. If we click this, you know, 10 different times, if we open this up, uh, the same application in an incognito window, it's gonna say zero times. So this variable is stored to the user's session rather than the, uh, the site itself or stayed persistent in the database. Now we have template helpers, which are gonna be enabling you to use various tags within your HTML. For instance, in our HTML file, we saw this counter tag right here. Well, this counter object in our template hello helpers is the result of this function. So as you can see, it's getting the session variable counter and it's returning it as the value in this object here. Okay, now if that doesn't make a whole ton of sense yet, don't worry, we're not even gonna get into session variables in depth until for a few more videos. So don't worry too much about session variables or anything like that. However, we're going to show you quite a bit about them. Now we also have this template.hello.events. Now as you can see that this is where our event's going to go. And you can say when we click the button, and it's going to increment the counter that's being clicked. So it's going to set the counter variable one more than it already was. So in these 23 lines of JavaScript, and in fact, uh, just 17 of them are actually applicable, uh, we have this nice little web app that's doing uh, something really super basic, but it's pretty cool that it exists and it works so nicely. We'll be even more excited about the resolutions application that we're going to be creating is not going to be using very much more JavaScript than that, and it's going to be way more complex, and it's going to even persist into a database. So that's a brief tour about what comes when you install Meteor and you use this create command. So over the course of the next few videos, we're going to get started creating our application. In the next video, we're actually going to start laying the groundwork down, and I'm going to pass along the CSS for our Meteor application so that you can just drop that in your project and we don't have to worry about it. Uh, uh, obviously, the resolutions application isn't going to be winning any sort of design awards, but it's nice to have. However, it will be nice for you to see the same thing on your screen that's on my screen. So I'm really excited to teach you the basics of using Meteor. And hopefully after that, we're gonna get into some really great intermediate and advanced Meteor stuff as well. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.